22-16, your Philadelphia Eagles take it as we welcome you to Eagles Post Game Hello. Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, Barrett Brooks, Ron Jaworski, all smiles, Reuben Frank. Uh, yeah, 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 not, not yet. <laughs> not, not really. We'll get them. We'll get them yeah. going. We've got uh, all the interviews and analysis. Here's the bottom line. The Eagles are the number one seed. They get a bye week next week as they walk off this field triumphant against the New York Giants, 22-16. to There's Jeffrey Lurie. You know he's got smile on his face. Fletcher Cox walking off, all these guys. Yeah, they're not frowning because they do have a break. Did they play great? No. Was it a lackluster victory? Yes. Were there some things they could have done better? Absolutely. We'll get into those. But the bottom line in sport is what it is. And that is that the Eagles are going to rest a week, top seed. And, you know, they were lackluster as well in 2017. Ended up with a parade. So I I'm going to take it. Barrett Brooks, your thoughts as we watch them walk off. A win is a win. Like I said in the, in the pregame show. As long as they win by one point, it's still a win. Now, just looking at what was going on the field, I'm not going to say that I'm happy with the performance. Uh, we were playing against backups, but still, though, you know, at the end of the day, um, they did what they needed to do, put that last win in the win column. We were the number one seed, the best record in the NFL, and we get a week to rest and look up and, and sit back and lick our wounds. You see that exhale by Nick Sirianni? <laughs> oh, man. I didn't want it to be like this. I didn't want it to go this close. Hey, Jaws, hey, nobody got hurt, too. No, nobody got hurt. That's important. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back a little bit to September 11th when this season opened. All right? We're in Detroit. Got a win in Detroit. It's been a battle since then. Here we are, January 8th. And the fact that we now have a record of 14 and 3, number one seed in the playoffs, that's a remarkable season. Now, hey, it may not be the great finish we wanted, but 14 and 3 is an unbelievable record. You get a chance to get your players healthy, number one. This coaching staff now do their work, and the, the two teams are going to at least face in the playoffs, get way ahead of everybody else. There's a lot of benefits from getting this bye week. The Eagles have accomplished everything they set out to do back on. September 11th. Yeah, you're exactly That's right. Exactly. You know, and it was right big when you said that was big for you. Ruben this Frank team has nothing to apologize for. I, nope. you know, there's no difference if they won this game uh, 51 to 26, which, by the way, is the score the Cowboys beat the Eagles last year. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that? They lost yeah. in the first round. There's no carryover just because they didn't win this game by 35 nothing or whatever, which I expected a score like that. Honestly, I did. I you expected, said so did I. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I think we all did. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's I, I don't believe in style points. I don't believe in momentum or carryover. Uh, every team has issues that they need to clean up right now. The Eagles just have twice as much time to clean those issues up. Absolutely. Because of the work they put in all year. So nothing to apologize for. It's not the score I anticipated. It There's things Jaylen. they have to work on. Jalen certainly was rusty. But 14-3, like Jaw said, you take yeah, it. I'll tell you, it's a testament to the National Football League, by the way. All the stuff that's going on this week and everything else happening this game. And the New York Giants played a lot of backup players. Uh, you you, you got to give credit to some of the players for the performance they had. Even though they're your opponent, they made this a hell of a game. Let me just stop you, Jaws. There's number 11, A.J. Brown, yep. who eclipses your former teammate, Mike Quick, a, a player to which you threw, what, how many uh, hundreds <laughs> of, of <laughs> yards of passes, thousands, thousands of yards of passes? Millions. No, but in, that, <laughs> million, but, but in that 1983 season in particular, which is when Mike Quick set the record for most yards in a season for uh, receiving yards for a Philadelphia Eagles receiver and A.J. Brown eclipses that today, which yeah, is pretty heck, special. Heck of a season by A.J. Brown. And I, I, I think he's the, the best acquisition in the offseason too. I mean, Absolutely. What he's led Absolutely. this team on that offensive side has been just remarkable. And a great congratulations on breaking Mike Quick's record because Mike Carmichael, I was fortunate to play with some great players and you know, you can put eight. I didn't play with A.J. Brown, but it's been fun watching him. And <laughs> some props to Ben Hawkins, another four. He still has the record for most yards per game. Mm -hmm. 1967, yeah. he had 1,265 wow. yards in a 14-game season. And he beats both A.J. Brown and Mike Quick. And See, Mike, Mike, Quick as I tell, Mike, Mike Quick will tell A.J. Brown, yeah, but it took you 17 games. It, well, <laughs> which is Ben Hawkins would tell Mike, it took yeah, you 16. Which <laughs> is not an insignificant point because the Eagles also end up with their largest win total ever in a regular season, 14 wins. It comes in a 17-game season. Ruben, what are your thoughts on that? You don't believe in style points, etc. Uh, it is for a season, but it's one extra game. 
or one more game than has previously been played. Yeah, and Jalen Hurts now the, the second youngest quarterback ever to win 14 games in a season. Dan Marino did it in 1984 as a 23-year-old. Uh, yeah, look, the, the, the final number to me is irrelevant. If Jalen had played the whole year, who knows how many, how many wins they would have had if he played all 17 games. They might have won 15 or 16. So uh, it, all that matters to me right now is, is looking ahead. All right, you know, 14-3 is ancient history. They've done it. They got the number one seed. That's why you play the season. Let's see what what's the, uh, what we need to work on in the postseason going into the playoffs and, and where we are. Mm -hmm. You heard uh, one of the broadcasters say at the end of the game, quote, you can sense they are dissatisfied with what transpired. And I think we felt a little of that. But you know what? They would have been, they would have had that same mood if they won 30 nothing. You it, think so? Yeah, because this year isn't about today. It's not about clinching the number one. They've kind of known they were going to have it for a while. I really believe that what you saw from them was just their expectations expectations go beyond just the regular season. Mm -hmm. They, they want to win right. the whole yeah, thing. I believe in that wholeheartedly because this team, just like Jaws said, accomplished everything they needed to accomplish. You know, they needed the number one seed, number one, have everybody come through Philadelphia to win. That's, that's you know, ab absolutely the biggest thing that I can think about is going to this playoff system. Not, you know, yes, two games getting to the Super Bowl is, is, is big. But the fact that they got to come here in Philly to play, it really puts us in a position where we can definitely be dominant. In play. I, I don't think you would have seen them celebrate if it was 49 nothing. I, I don't believe they're wired that way. All right, how about this? The way they are set up now going forward, two-week break. Uh, they do have guys that are injured. They Certainly, there's Lane Johnson, who we hope will be playing injured. We hope that injury is not severe enough that it would keep him from that. There are guys on the defensive side of the ball as well that are hurt. The way this thing sets up is is in the Eagles' favor now. It, it sets up perfectly. In, in fact, if you look at what happens now, that's what you got to think about. What happens now in the next couple of weeks? Got eight, got time. Game plan organization. You now know Basically, who you're going to be playing? You, know, you maybe one of one of two teams. Now the staff, which is shown all season long, from a coaching staff, a scouting department, they can put a game plan together, and they can put a game plan together that's very effective. They're now going to have that extra week to prepare. You start bringing all the scouts in and put that plan together. So it's a huge advantage because you've got that time to focus on your next opponent, not the next game. Mm -hmm. All right, we've all weighed in on this. We want to hear from the fans. Here's our pick and click question. Uh, Question of the day presented by our friends at Turnersville Auto Mall. Usually this is something we present to you a little bit later on in the program, but it's right after the game. Are you concerned at all with the Eagles' performance today? Go to NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com slash pick and click. You can answer as many times as you wish. And you remember, the slate gets wiped clean as of, oh, right now, <laughs> going forward into the playoffs. The Eagles will not play next week, and uh, hopefully they will play the lowest seed available two weeks from now and, the, and they only need to win only need to win two games to get to the Super Bowl from here and both those games will be played right across the street at Lincoln Financial Field 77 percent say 80 percent yes it was ugly remember 90 percent wow. no remember, they got the number one seed we better start talking 2000. 2000. <laughs> you can sway them draws they were playing so poorly at the end of the regular season in 2017 people wanted to bench Nick Foles for Nate Sudfeld yeah. remember that yeah the I last game of the Regular Vaguely. season. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, was ter he wasn't yeah. good against the Raiders. He wasn't good against the Cowboys in a, in a brief cameo through an interception. And people wanted Nate Sudfeld to play because he had been 17 for 21 against Washington. So, look, it, there's – and what happened that year? That, that yeah. one ended pretty well. So, I certainly wouldn't be – I'd be concerned about certain elements of what we saw and what we've seen, really, frankly, over the last month. What are those elements, Rube? What well, are you know, those certainly... elements that you would be concerned with that will have an effect potentially two weeks hence? Well, I mean, Jalen's rustiness is something that I don't think will be an issue in two weeks. I no, would think, no exactly. I would think he would get past that. He did look a little rustier than I expected. Uh, run defense is a little concerning. Uh, big, some big plays were a little concerning. Not being able to get the running game going with Miles. Got to get Miles back where he didn't have the brace on today. He said he felt 100%. Got to get him back where he was about a, a few weeks ago. Uh, so stuff like that. And I think the offensive line has been a little leaky. Obviously, part of that is not having Lane Johnson. Uh, they've got to be better. Penalties. Uh, costly one wiped out a touchdown uh, yep. tonight. Uh, too many penalties. That's two, that's two weeks in a row. That Communication happened. breakdowns. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Gainwell lost a touchdown last year. Uh, the O-line should be a strength of this team, and I feel like the last few weeks it really hasn't been. Yeah. I mean, no, number one, I was happy to see Jalen Hurts playing. 
and I thought he played very well. I, I would agree that there were there's some rust on him, but I thought overall he played very well. Early in the game, he was reading the pressure. So, you know, the Giants came into this game the number one blitzing team in the NFL. 41% of the time they blitzed. They brought some heat early, and Jalen read the blitzes, got the ball out. The big play to A.J. Brown for some was a blitz. You know, check down was a blitz. He read the blitzes early, and he took some hits. And quite honestly, he was an old quarterback that got hit many times and had a lot of injuries. After you're injured, you want to get that first hit and go, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. And I'm, glad, I'm glad he got some hits because now he knows, all right, he's fine, he's healthy. And I did find surprising that during the telecast, you know, they, the players meet with the, the, the production crew and they talk about, you know, yeah, we're anything they want to. This. And, you know, Jalen apparently told the, the, uh, the, production, the, the team. production team that, well, uh, you know, I was really hurt after that Chicago game. I should have went back in the game after I got hurt. And I couldn't throw for two weeks. I'm going, whoa, where did all this stuff come out of? Apparently, you know, the injury seems to be a lot deeper than we were led to believe. So that's why I'm even more happy now that, okay, all right, he took his hits. He's okay. But above all that, we talked about this during the halftime hit on Nissan halftime in game live, which was that play was designed by Nick Sirianni. He called that play on which Jalen Hurts got hurt. So, yeah, J you know, Jalen Jalen Hurts is going to run the play that is called. Yeah. And He's if he make gets, the read and right, either, either hand you, it off you, or keep it. You got to expect your head coach uh, on minus degree temperatures and a, and against a terrible team that he might be a little bit more judicious. With the play calls in that situation, well, you know I mean, that's a problem we having right now, and, and I, I, I don't want to get it to a point where you know the play calling, you know, I'm be on extension. But I will say this: we threw way too much. The ball was in the air too damn much today. We shouldn't have thrown as much as we threw it. We should have ran the ball. We've got guys. We got really good backs out there that we can give it to. Boston Scott, you know. He's a giant killer. You know, give him an opportunity. I bet he could have ran for a lot more yards than that. We threw way too much, and I don't understand, especially with Jalen trying to come back, especially with a starting right tackle that's not a starting right tackle. And when you're throwing these balls, you're not giving them protection. We're still throwing way too much when we don't have the capacity right now to be safe enough to throw with you know, our starting right tackle. Ended up with 35 rushing attempts, but the first eight plays of the game were passes. passes. Exactly. I didn't like that. No, yeah. not at all. Uh, I, actually, I have the game book here just out. I have 34 rushing attempts, including Jalen Hurts' nine attempts, and 35 plus 338 called passes. It was pretty close, but in the way they started, I'd like to start yeah. out running the ball. And that's something they've gotten away from really going back to the Chicago game. Yes. You know, Miles Sanders has something like now 15 first half runs in the last four games. Um, started earlier. You know, they, they like to throw early and then run late, but yeah, um, you can do it well. Do it early. The Turnersville Auto Mall pick and click ends about 50-50 with regard to concern. And uh, no, they got the number one seed. That is the bottom line, and that one is what makes this Philadelphia sports because we'll be worrying about it for the next. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you make it, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want you to set the tempo for oh, us. You think I, they're going I, right to, to Arizona, <laughs> don't you? You're damn right, uh, I do. Okay, uh, you I tell me. You're right. I don't care who's coming in here and going to beat this team in two weeks. Who's going to come into Philadelphia and beat this team in three weeks? Who? Sam Chisco? Yeah, no, Dallas. Oh, no, I agree. Dallas on tomorrow. I, 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 I said the same thing. Yeah, I said the same thing. I, I agree. That's a great point, yeah. Josh. Look, look at it. Even looking at the 49ers, and I know we get a little ahead of ourselves, but look at the 49ers. Yes, they have a great defense, but I really think that if we use our running game, our defensive line, I mean, our offensive line against their defense, I mean, I, I think we'll fare well with that. You know, I'm not scared of any team in the NFL. Everybody's scared of us because we are the number one team in the NFL. We have the, the best um, – the best – combination of receivers, running backs, and quarterbacks yeah. with an offensive line in the league. I would disagree with you, Barrett. I would think at, at a time like this is for a prognostication. A time like, they don't have an <laughs> opponent next week. And I'll ask Ruben Frank, when you look at that, there is no team that I would fear coming into this stadium. Uh, I'm, I'm even going to go over the AFC. I think they would fare well against any of the teams. Absolutely. Kansas City, Buffalo, you, you, you pick one that you think does. they don't match up well against. The only two teams in the NFL that can beat the Eagles if the Eagles play well that can beat the Eagles are the Chiefs and the Niners they're the only teams the Bengals if they have a perfect but if the Eagles do their thing they can play with anybody in the NFC the Niners are the only team unless the Eagles it's one of those four turnover type games if something right. fluky happens I don't see anyone wasn't the Dallas final today where they lose 26-6 mm-hmm 
Uh, I, I don't see anybody in this conference other than the Niners. The Niners are very good. Brock Purdy had another three touchdowns today. Uh, he's scary. And been, that defense, been remarkable. Yep. He's been incredible, and that defense is legit. And that team, I think that would be a heck of a game here. It's going to come. You know, that's going to be that's a close game. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to see it. It'd be an exciting game too. Whenever you have two teams that have not played against each other in a given season, yep. and they're they're coming together for the first time. D'Amico Ryan is going to be a head coach very soon. The former Eagle. Tremendous right. job there. Let's take